In this video I'm going to show you the layers that went into creating this zombie geisha. Be sure to stick around as you'll see exactly all the layers that went into creating it including the textures, dodge and burn, colour grading and other things. Hi guys, welcome to the video. My name is Clinton Lofthouse. I'm a photographer and photo manipulator from the UK and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. On this channel we take you beyond the Photoshop basics and into the world of advanced digital art. So this is the final image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go into Photoshop and I'm going to dive into the layers and I'm just going to walk you through the different layers uh, that I used to create this image. So let's just jump straight into Photoshop. As you can see here is the image straight out of camera. Um, this is at my old studio. So this image is around maybe it could be maybe six years old maybe, it could be a little bit older. So I had a model round, uh, I had a makeup and hairstylist who, who did the hair. So the obviously I was going for like a zombie ge geisha feel, I think that's how I pronounce it. I'm sure people will correct me. So this half of the side is still geisha and we had the, we had some white, it doesn't look very strong here but this was quite white uh, face paint here and then it blends off here and this is the part I'm going to turn into a zombie and this is the hair what's all messed up on the zombie side as well so you had this half which is still geisha this half which is zombie um, lighting wise I had a strip box here to get some rim light down the arm here I had a, a light here with no modifier because I wanted some lens flare and a bit of uh, harsh light because the sun was going to be here in the image and then I had some uh, a soft box in front as you can see in the little lights in her eyes and that was just to fill in the shadows and again when you're creating an image the best way to do it is just do a little bit of planning first it's always good to think right this is how I want them to pose maybe this is where the sun's gonna be so then when you go into the studio to shoot your model you can light the way you want your final image to look so it doesn't take long just a little bit of pre vis or pre-planning and it just goes a long way so let's now jump into the layers. So this is straight out camera and then as you can see uh, I'm just painting on the background here. This probably will make more sense as we bring some extra bits in. So what I wanted here is I wanted the arm more across here. I didn't like the position so I, I cut out the body and added a, another version of the body in and then blended it together. And then just started playing around, uh, just blending these two bodies together. So that was with a curves adjustment. And now I'm going to change the skin. So when you're creating zombies, obviously there's zombies. There's many types of zombies. I quite like the. I would guess they're more like comic book or punk core or. Uh, there's many names for it so it's basically the zombies with the very green skin what look a little bit like something from a, a creepy comic so how I do that is I basically use a hue saturation and I'll target the, the, the color of the skin and then I'll just slide the the hue saturation slider along until that part of the skin turns green and then if it goes over I can always use a layer mask like I have here and I've just masked it off this part of the face and maybe some around the arm here where a big chunk of her arm has gone missing because someone's a zombie's back bit it and as you can see I've actually it's bled over the arm a little bit here and a little bit there so baby steps we're just kind of painting the skin and then what I did then with a curves adjustment is just lighting up this part of the arm where the sun is so now we get to the textures so basically all I'm using here is various rust and decay textures so like paint coming off of walls a little bit of rust and I've just all I've done is put them around the body on a soft light blend mode and it just blends into the skin like so and then I've added the veins in so you can't see here but if we zoom into the face let's have a look up here again because very roughly I've just kind of drawn these with a brush painted them in but because you don't look at this image this close when you zoom out you just get a nice vein effect in on the face like so and then moving up to the next layers we've got the dodge and burn now so as you, as you can see here you can start to get some depth in the face it looks a bit more painterly 
just painting over the arms and over the body. So I'll just keep clicking that off and on. Let's just add these um, layers on as well. That's So this layer here was for the eyes. So I've just, if you look at the eyes here, with a white or grey brush, I've just kind of very, very thinly painted over the eye so you get that dead eye effect. And then I've just painted some red into the corners here. I'm not sure what this one is doing. Sometimes this happens. In fact, it happens a lot. <laughs> you click it off and on. It will be doing something, but it must be something very minuscule. So again, we've got the dodge and burn here, bringing more shape to the face and the body. And then I've got the teeth browning. It's obviously a teeth for too good. Zombies usually don't have very good teeth. Um, so basically all I've done with that is just turn the color, painted a little bit of brown onto them on soft light blend mode like so so as you can see all these little bits are building up this zombie um, so textures doing the eyes rotting the teeth painting in some little veins it all adds up to the final image and then here I added in the fan the uh, original fan as it was it kind of fit the arm better and then with a curves adjustment I matched the brightness of that if you're getting value from this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. It's free, easy, and really supports the channel. And all the techniques that you see in all my tutorials, you can find in my Hollywood processing course. There is a link below the video. As you can see from these layers, this is quite an old image, and <laughs> this, this layers panel is a little bit untidy. Um, it's fun actually going back into these old images and seeing how messily I uh, did work. I have got a little bit better, but I think sometimes when you get caught, caught in the like the enjoyment of an image, like these images for me are always fun and I enjoy turning people into zombies. It's just a fun thing. So I kind of run through quite quickly because I want to get to the end. Um, so yeah, you'll just have to forgive me for what I've uh, done with the layers in this organization. So now we're just focusing on the background, so I've just got this image here. Obviously this is where the sun is, this is around where the light is, so I'm kind of trying to match up the sun and the light as well. And then I bring in the mountain, I guess. This is a stock image and I, I guess it's Japan. I'm not going to put uh, any money on it because I have no idea, but I'm, I'm guessing it is. Hopefully. And then I'm just using colour balance to match the bottom part of the image with the sky part. And then I just added some smoke in here, which you don't really see anyway, so that was pointless. Uh, I just thought you might do. And then, here's that saturation. I'm then turning this yellow now, because I'm trying to play with the colours, because the, obviously the, the model is green and red, so then I wanted a kind of a complementary colour, what goes with them, to create a, a pleasing colour scheme. So we went for yellow. Again, added a little bit more yellow to that. And now, let me just pop the model back in so then we have our model so all those adjustments we've done before back on the background and then obviously I started we've got a hole here where she's she's been bitten so I started putting some of a uh, gown back in just taking parts of the gown and blending it in and then I put the bone in so this is a bit of a bone and then we move up and then again now I'm just painting in on soft light the kind of rawness of the skin around this huge bite mark here. Again, this will just be with a brush. Uh, and then again, painting. So this is where I'm going to have some chopsticks coming out of her neck. She had one in her hair and I just thought it would be quite fun to have some coming out of her neck. So I'm just kind of painting the blood around the neck hole here. And then now adding some colour matching to the model so again this is the curves using colour curves just to add some yellow into the overall figure and now some contrast again with curves and some colour balance here so if I'm done here let's have a look so in the highlights I've added some yellow again still part of the colour matching and then I've just toned down the light on this side of her dress here with curves adjustment I've just pulled down the highlights as you can see, I've just toned it a bit because the light is coming from this direction. There's a bit of light. Obviously, you would get some light here, but the sun is this direction here. And 
No. Just desaturating the red a little bit, so you can't really tell. I mean, you can just about see it, but just pulling down the reds a little bit in this in this gown. And then I bring in the chopsticks. Again, just cut them out with the pen tool and then brought them in. And then I start colour matching the and toning the chopsticks so they fit into the image better. So this, again, like I did with the model, just curves and colour balance, as you can see. And then I've taken away a little bit of the contrast with curves. And then adding some hair in here, so it's going over that chopstick. Like so. So you kind of, because there's a bit of overlap, it makes the chopstick more believable. And then good old light flares. I like, I know a lot of people like to do dark art and horror photography and they like to, the images to be very dark. I sometimes try and, I like to, because there's just a lot of dark images, I quite like to make some of mine bright. But I do like to do horror photography that uses bright images, uh, bright colours and things like that, because it's nice to play around with things that are a little bit not the norm and grungy dark images are usually the norm for horror photography but I digress so let me just jump back into the layers so here we have the foreground trees so basically what I've done there is I've cut some uh, some Japanese uh, bonsai looking trees out and then I've just put them into the foreground foreground overlapping our model and then just added a Gaussian blur and it just creates a sense of depth in the image and then I added another little piece here bit of interest and depth in the image so then using curves adjustment I've just took some of the contrast away from the edge so you thought the your eye focuses on this here so what it's basically doing is drawing your eyes into the center of the image so as you can see here, it's not a massive change but it's just a lack of contrast now what I've created with the curves adjustment and your eye does generally go to the area of greatest contrast so then we have a little bit of clean up on the um, the gown or the outfit and adding some colour in there as well, just changing the colour. Again, we've got another layer here, what I'm not actually sure it does. <laughs> it is doing something, but anyway. And then again, I always like to add a little bit of colour into my shadow. So with the selective colour here, I've just added a little bit of red in. It's not massive, but if you kind of look in this area here, you can see it the most there. So off and on, and it just adds a bit more of a painterly feel to the image. And then Nick Color 4 Detail Extractor, so I just pulled out the detail, mainly of the model. So where the white patch is here is where I've brought this area out. So I've pulled all the details out of this like big area here. And then I added some sharpening, and that's the final image. And this image here is a help layer that I did earlier on, so I just when I, before I actually edited anything, I was like, clean the creases in the dress, we need to add some blood rot to the neck, maybe some blood and, uh, I'm not what, sh oh, sort the dress out, can't even read my own handwriting. <laughs> it does look like a five year old has written it, but it's hard to actually write quite neat with a Wacom. Anyway, so this was a help blur, just reminded me of certain things that I need to do. Well that's it for this tutorial, I hope you found it of value, if you did it would be amazing if you could like, comment and subscribe. You could even share this video with someone you feel will benefit from it. It helps our channel a lot to get seen and we appreciate it each and every time you do. You guys are awesome, we love the interaction, so thanks again, we truly are grateful. Thanks guys and I will see you next time.